Russian prosecutors are calling for Vladimir Putin's most vocal critic, Alexei Navalny, to serve 13 years in prison. Let's now speak to Vladimir Ashurkov. He's a confidant of the Ro Russian opposition leader and he's currently executive director of the Anti-Corruption Foundation. Uh, Mr. Ashkurov, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Thank you for having me. So uh, there you are. You, you are an aide to Alexei Navalny. Um, he's been on trial again. Uh, what more can you tell us? What is the latest situation? Well, he has been um, in prison for a little over a year after his return uh, to Russia uh, following his poisoning. Um, and um, the trial, the prosecutor uh, in the new trial asked for 13 years additional uh, sentence. Uh, the verdict uh, is scheduled to uh, be held on March uh, 22. Look, Navalny, hugely brave. I mean, he didn't need to be arrested, did he? He returned to the country knowing exactly what would happen. We we're showing the picture there of him doing a heart gesture to his wife. So he's separated from his loved ones, his children. But he's doing it because he wants to protect the future of his country and indeed uh, the, the next generation. And he said as much, didn't he, to the judge yesterday that she was betraying uh, future generations. Yes, inspiringly for uh, his team, for all Russians, he maintained uh, calm and presence during this uh, ordeal with the trial and uh, with prison. And uh, he is raising his voice against the totalitarian uh, government of Putin and against the ongoing war from uh, the, his uh, uh, this trial, which is bizarrely had in the prison where uh, he's held. Now, Mr. Navalny's corruption charges, as I understand it, carry a maximum penalty of 10 years, uh, yet prosecutors are asking for more on that. They're asking for up to 13 years for new fraud charges. Um, I mean, you're feeling, obviously, you're going to be very defensive on that. Uh, basically, are these charges real? The allegations are that he... Uh, used the money that was collected by the Anti-Corruption Foundation, which has been the platform for his civil activities in uh, Russia for over 10 years uh, for his personal gain. Um, he never received any salary. Uh, the uh, work of the foundation has been very transparent. Uh, and uh, the, in fact, the, the maximum sentence for this is 15 years, not 10. Um, but uh, the, we need to look at the substance. Navalny over years has become the most uh, prominent uh, critic and uh, enemy of Vladimir Putin. And it's uh, natural then in, that in today's repressive environment in Russia, uh, Putin held, holds him in uh, prison. So I think Navalny unfortunately will be in prison until the uh, regime in Russia changes. I don't know if uh, if you've chosen to leave Russia for reasons of you know fear for your own safety or, or if you're in London for for another reason. But there is a big concern, isn't there, that you know despite thirteen thousand people having taken to the streets and and being and protesting, they've been arrested and a lot of people decided it's just not worth it. They want to get out. There's this huge brain drain, isn't there, of educated Russians fleeing for fear of martial law and further freedoms being taken away. Sure. Um... Um, I was a victim of political persecution, so a criminal case was opened against me and uh, I had to leave Russia in 2014. Otherwise, I would be uh, in prison now in Russia. Indeed, the uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia has put many Russians on, um, on alert and uh, thousands of people are leaving Russia now uh, without preparation in haste because they want to escape this uh, repressive regime, which day by day adopts uh, new laws that make the civil and political freedom in Russia basically disappear. Uh, Vladimir, I just, I just want to ask you, well, you know, how much the Russian people know about all of this? How much is being done, you know, that this is being done in their name and, and yet here in the West we call this Putin's war as well? Um, the ballot box, does it work in Russia? Um, how do you call it a repressive regime? 
How could it change? Would it change? Do the people want it to change? Well, the political field in Russia has been raised for uh, at more than a decade. All the feedback mechanism between the society and the authorities have been hijacked or eliminated. There is no representative political system. There are no independent uh, parties, no independent uh, political candidates that can run for office. They will not get registered. Um, the court system uh, is often used for intimidation and persecution of um, critics of uh, the authorities. Uh, just don't talk, uh, look at Navalny uh, and other people. Um, the uh, press has been uh, under increasing restrictions and just over the last uh, two weeks, the last independent media outlets have been closed. And um, you cannot uh, you cannot get on Twitter, you cannot get on Facebook, on Instagram in Russia without VPN. So this just shows that uh, all the freedoms and all the feedback mechanisms have have been uh, uh, eliminated. So yeah. um, if we talk about Russian population, the estimates are that about thirty percent support uh, what's going on. But wow. uh, most people don't. They, they, they don't support war. And um, once the economic cost of this war sinks in, I think the, the um, support of this war will mm. further diminish. OK, Vladimir Sherkov, we've got to leave it there. Um, and Mr. Sherkov is a Russian exile living in London and an aide to opposition, a former opposition leader, Alexei Navalny. Thank you very much indeed for your insight. Thank you. Thank you.